In the top 100 metros, which is the, what we looked at in this study, there's a lot of variation in skill sets in the immigrant population. In fact, 44 of the top metropolitan areas are tilted towards high-skilled immigrants. We call them high-skilled destinations. And about 30 are low-skilled destinations where um, immigrants without a high school diploma outweigh those with a college education. And those that are more mixed, more balanced, make up the remainder. So there's a lot of variation across the top 100. And this varies for several reasons. The first is by the underlying economic structure of places. So where there are um, higher skilled immigrants, there are certain industries that tend to draw them, whether it's uh, high tech or uh, banking and finance, education and healthcare. There's a, a, a range of, of industries that draw high skilled immigrants. In the last decade, we saw a lot of places that were growing very fast in terms of their economies, in terms of their housing markets. And these places tended to draw on immigrant workers who literally helped to build these places. So where we saw a, you know, a booming housing market in, before the recession, we saw a lot of immigrants going to those places and working in construction and other industries. You know, in recent years, there's been a lot of debate over immigration, and a lot of it focuses on illegal immigration. Um, we've seen uh, Congress debate changing the laws. We've seen local areas take uh, matters in their own hands by passing laws that are intended to enforce um, local and, and state immigration laws. And so I think some people will be surprised by our findings that there are more high-skilled than low-skilled immigrants in, in the country right now. And that has the potential to inform the debate, if not, I don't expect it to change it necessarily, but at least we now have some information about who's here and what, what they are capable of doing in this country, in fact, what they are doing in this country. One of the main reasons why we should care about incorporating low-skilled immigrants into the U.S. and into communities and into local economies is that they are kind of at the foundation of those economies at some level. They're working in jobs that are essential, that keep local economies running. They also happen to be people that are most likely to have language barriers, to have e educational barriers as well. Um, but they're also, they also tend to be young in their childbearing years, and many of them have children. Those children most likely are U.S. citizens and will stay here for the rest of their lives. So getting their parents incorporated into communities in this country is important for the potential of their children. And there we want to make sure that those kids are as well prepared as everybody else to meet the needs of our labor force in the future and to keep the U.S. economically competitive.